today I wanted to take a little break from the questions because I had something that I kind of realized yesterday that I thought would be fun to talk about. Um, and that is the fear of abandonment after kind of growing up in Scientology. Um, I just like had my own little breakthrough about this yesterday um, because in the past people have asked me do you have a fear of abandonment and my immediate answer was well of course like who doesn't that's a very human fear doesn't everybody have it but um you know I guess the more that I think about it and I've actually been listening to some Tim Fletcher he's on YouTube I'll put a link to his channel in the description um but it's just been very um, enlightening listening to some of his things. I think many of you might enjoy it, um, listening to his videos. Serge actually sent me the first one I ever listened to, and since then I've been hooked. Um, but anyways, um, just by nature of not growing up in a house with my parents or my family or you know, it's not just a physical abandonment thing that happens in Scientology because every emotion you have, um, any sort of negative emotion, like sadness, unhappiness, you're sort of taught to squash it down. They, they refer to it as human emotion and reaction, and the acronym is H-E-N-R, and it's just like, stop being H-E-N-R-E, or it's get your TRs in, or don't have case on post, which means dramatizing your reactive mind when you're supposed to be doing your job. So there's all these sayings that are basically like, suck it up, don't have feelings. You know, you're also very much taught in Scientology that if you don't like something and if you speak badly about it, it's because you have done something bad to that thing. And you, the reason you're speaking bad of it is because you now have to belittle it in order to not feel as bad about the bad thing you did. Um, and so there are so many different little mind things that go on there, including the TRs, which, you know, stop you from reacting to things or having emotions, or they teach you not to. There's so many little things that are kind of all about squashing your emotions. And um, so on some level, what would occur for me, um, you know, uh, with my parents is that I wouldn't tell them anything that was going on with me or any adult because I just knew that it would get me in trouble. But I guess as an adult and as a parent, when I look back at it, what I realize is that this is an emotional abandonment. It's like you have all these feelings inside and you have certain needs or even in many cases, there are certain things I didn't want to do. I didn't want to work that day in the hot, hot sun for five hours, or I didn't understand something in my studies, but if I ever communicated it, it was like, okay, well, what did you do wrong? I mean, I even remember this one time, one of the teachers at the ranch, she was a younger teacher. She was probably about 19 and she, I was telling her I didn't want to do something. And so she put me into this closet. I mean, it's not like a small closet. I mean, it's not like a tiny closet. It's like kind of like a walk-in closet. And it was where all the books were. Um, and she basically said, well, you need to stay in here until you, um, basically until you're gonna be good. And then I was like fighting to get out. And basically she wound up punching me in the face, this teacher lady. And I remember being like, I remember uh, seeing my mom on that, um, that Saturday or that, that Saturday night. And I told her, I was like, the teacher punched me in the face. And she said, well, what did you do to, that made her do that? And so that's just, anything that you complained about or that was hard it was like well what did you do to pull that in and um it's just like i mean i can't imagine a more emotionally 
uh, an environment more rife with emotional abandonment than Scientology. It's literally built into their beliefs. And um, I guess yesterday I, I started realizing how this was affecting me and my relationships. And it's interesting because with my friends, I consider that I can go to them for anything and any support they give me is, uh, I'm so grateful for it. And um, I, I like will take whatever I can get. And I, and I have people I can go to and that's wonderful. But one thing I realize is that in relationships such as my marriage, I would do this thing where I would I expected my spouse to basically be my emotional support in a way that my parents were not when I was a kid. Like with my friends, it was a nice to have, but with my spouse, it was like, it was their job in my mind because that's the thing that I decided was the way to show love, not just to show love, but I was almost like, how can someone love you and not do this it's not possible and i would kind of assign them i never told them this but i would assign them that in my mind as their job and when they wouldn't do it it would be devastating it would be like being emotionally abandoned all over again when i was a kid and i never said this directly and not only that but i would take something small unknowingly, completely unknowingly, this is what's crazy about it to me, is that I would take something small that I would get upset about and that I would just say, you know, complain about or vent about, but, and it normally, like with any other friend, I, it would just be like, oh, I'm sorry. But I would set it up in my mind that if my, the person I was in a relationship with didn't respond in a way that I wanted that it would be emotional abandonment so not all so I was just making it about something much bigger than it was at the time I was turning something small into something that would almost certainly become an emotional abandonment and it, I wasn't doing it to be mean, although it was kind of like a test, but it wasn't a test to be like, oh, this person's bad or this person's not enough. But I would wind up saying that, like I would be like, well, why aren't you there for me? And I, and it wound up being something that, that made me critical about that person. But I didn't realize that I was setting them up for failure and that there was this whole other test going on in my mind and that I was kind of, hurting myself in that way too. I was setting myself up to be, to feel emotional abandonment constantly in a relationship in a way where I never felt that with a friend. I never, I never assigned that as, um, as my friend's job. And, um, and that just resulted in a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and a lot of making something small into something big and that's the main thing it would be making something really really small and it would turn into something huge and I swear to God I would try so hard to resolve arguments and resolve things that I don't know, just resolve arguments or conversations that would just go in circles. And I was so convinced that because I was trying so hard to resolve it, that it couldn't possibly be my fault because I felt like I would take responsibility for things that I said in the conversation. I would say, oh, I'm sorry I said this, I'm sorry I did that. But this was the one thing, the, the, the part of turning into an emotional abandonment was just such a blind, has been such a blind spot for me that I would have no way of ever realizing that that's what was happening and that's what I was doing and that it was actually sabotaging myself. And I would sort of go into these situations expecting 
that, um, that I would be emotionally abandoned and kind of knowing that I would and kind of judging the person I was with on that. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy that, that to realize that I have been doing that the whole time and that there's this complete and utter double standard between my friends and the person I'm in a relationship with because I'm sort of like assigning them sort of some sort of weird parental thing, which is weird. I don't know why that sounds creepy, but it's, it's not, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Um, yeah, I just realized that the other day and I just thought that maybe, um, and I wrote it down and I'm making a video about it so that I can remember it because I need to sort of practice not doing it. I mean, sometimes when I talk with Natalie, she talks about um, cognitive therapy where you have certain neural pathways that you're used to following and they become like a rut that you dig and it's just so much easier for your brain to take that route. But I guess sort of now that I've sort of realized this, I want to try to forge another pathway. But at first it's gonna be hard because there, it had like the path hasn't been dug out and um, but I want to try to be cognizant of that and um, and to build that other pathway just so that I can stop sabotaging myself in that way. Anyways, I just thought that this would be an interesting conversation. Maybe some of you guys would find it helpful and um, and yeah, if you guys want to check out Tim Fletcher, on YouTube, he even has some courses that are on his website that I think I might do because it just, they just look really interesting. And um, yeah, um, all right guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for always being so wonderful and sweet in your comments. It means so much to me. I truly appreciate it and um, I can't wait to see um have many more talks with you guys in the future oh and don't forget to check out sins of scientology it is on youtube my friend sandy mckenna has um that's her podcast and her partner abraham and it's just wonderful and enlightening all right guys have a wonderful day bye